first questions we have is kind of like, where do you get started? Like, what should you do? When should you do a tasting? Like, what should you expect from a tasting? Tell us a little bit about that. So I love to to get an early call because, you know, when you when you find your venue, you have to start really quickly looking for your vendors. So as soon as you do that, then give us a call. We can always start talking a little bit about budget because everybody's got a wedding budget or you should have a wedding budget, yes. you know, so you can kind of be mindful of that. And then just share that with me as far as, you know, we're getting married on such and such a date and this is kind of our overall budget. Um, and then just, you know, we can kind of meet and determine exactly when we should get together. Usually I try and say about eight to six months before. Um, so that's a good timeline for us to always get together six to eight months before. Um, and then we always set up a one-on-one -on -one personal consultation time. And during that time is when you actually get to sit down with me. And you should always sit down with your um, your designer. So you don't want to sit down with someone who's not going to be making your cake because they know exactly, you know, what the conversation is, what the details are. Um, it's that personal touch when you come to us that, you know, you want to kind of get to know the person and know that they're going to be hands-on with it. Um, so that's that's really what we try and do. Six to eight months before, call for consultation and a tasting, and then we set you up. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, and that's a really good tip about making sure that when you're talking to your baker that you mm -hmm. talk, you know, you find out if they're the ones who are designing it and make sure that it's really communicated really well as also. Yeah. Um, so how do you decide like what your cake should look like? Like where do you get inspiration from for that? Yeah, because yeah. all I would say is uh, I want it to be delicious. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's true. Definitely. And that definitely. is pretty much I think what you said for our wedding. hundred <laughs> percent. And definitely. yeah, the cake tasting is a lot of fun. It I is. mean, the cake tasting to me is the best part yeah. because then, you know, no one's poking and prodding you getting your measurements or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> you just come in. And so when you when you come in, you should always, you know, tell your um, baker what you want to try. And I always say, you know, pick your top four or five flavors of cake. Let's talk about fillings. Let's talk about different kinds of uh, buttercreams or icings that you would like on the outside. Um, and then, you know, when you come in, there's a nice plate presented to you. And that's the best because then you get to kind of mix and match your flavors and see exactly what you want. But, yeah, I mean, I think it's just a it's a great experience. And, and again, having that connectivity with that person, you know, who's going to be actually baking it, designing it, delivering it. I think that's a, a critical part. Yeah. And I think, too, like most most folks aren't going to aren't going to have as much fam familiarity with working with a professional baker mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, I know like when we, you know, we were, we were looking for our cake um, a few moons ago. Um, we, um, I, you know, I, I, we obviously had eaten, you know, grocery store cake and things like that, but when we actually <gasps> picked poo -poo, our, right? I know, well, I know, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know, poo -poo. but, we but <laughs> when, <laughs> when we were looking like at our cakes, I remember we were tasting things and like enjoying the raspberry and the lemon. And these are things that I would normally not pick. I would mm -hmm. be like chocolate vanilla sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but because we're working with professionals, it really just, it, it, it just takes it to a different like level, a different like culinary level. Absolutely. And you know, what I like to do is kind of plate things separately. So if you didn't think about pairing the raspberry with the lemon cake um, and you want to put it now with vanilla cake or something like that, it gives you the opportunity during the tasting to kind of do that. So then you can kind of mix and match your flavors and maybe come up with something you hadn't thought of. Like, I hadn't had that before, but I do yeah. like it. We're putting in the wedding cake. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think it's good, too. Like when you visit your baker, ask them, like, what are their signature like flavors? Like Absolutely. I know whenever we come to visit you, we always let them taste the almond because your almond is so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, so so ask your baker, right? Like that's yeah. a good question to ask even before the before the right. tasting. What's most popular? What are you known for? Um, what what's your signature thing? And yeah, that known as almond butter cream. She's pretty spectacular. Once Ooh, you baby. have yeah, once you have her, she's the queen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's, she's the queen. But influences, I really like to to talk with a couple about you know how did you meet? Let's talk about you know what you guys want the venue. What's the venue like? What you want it to all look like? Um, are we matching details of your wedding dress? Can the groom see what we're designing or is it too close to the wedding dress? Right. Um, are there announcements or invitations that we can use for inspiration? So all those things kind of play into it. So it's important to kind of at least have color scheme and things like that kind of down before you come to see us because we want to tie it all together, you know, as well as, you know, your florals. Um, just inspirations from those as well can always help us too. 
Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, as delicious as cake is, it's such a statement piece at the reception. It is. Absolutely. You know, I feel like everyone like walks into a reception and like sees that. And mm-hmm. so you want it to really flow with everything else you have. I think that's a really good good tip. Yeah, absolutely. Everything should be cohesive and look like it was all well planned out. And I always ask too for, um, you know, fabric swatches or colors and things like that, because nothing is worse than having a linen that doesn't match the cake. Or, you know, it's true. You know, something will <laughs> clash crazy and you're just like, uh, I need to see exactly what shade of coral we're going for. So, yeah. You know. So how does that work when someone comes in and they, they share all of that w- with you? Mm-hmm. How do you do you sketch it out? How do you how do you come up with the idea and the concept? Is it on the spot? Do you come back later? Like, what does that look like in your process? Yeah. So absolutely. It's right on the spot. Wow. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> Magic. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So you just get out your little, you know, pencil or pen and just kind of have at it. And, you know, first of all, you talk about the shape. Uh, The size is based upon the number of tiers that you would need, the number of servings that you need. So then all of that just kind of flows together. So you get a shape, you get a size, and then we start talking about little details. And again, those things can come from any of the details that you've got already incorporated in the wedding. Um, but and a lot of it is just you know we we met here uh, this is important to us we love to hear that people love to incorporate their pets it's mm. awesome yeah awesome yeah. so pets. No. yeah <laughs> so you can always incorporate your pets and and maybe you don't want it in the front of the cake but maybe we can do a little peekaboo or a little tuck behind of of the little dog or the little kitty kind of coming out behind the cake so when you guys go and cut it you get to see it and it just kind of makes you smile but there's lots of cute toppers and stuff like that too to incorporate the whole family the whole family yeah that's awesome that's Mm -hmm. awesome what if you want like a giant cake but you know you only have a hundred guests like (laughs) 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 or i mean i've seen you do some pretty crazy crazy cakes yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i think i heard a story about you climbing on top of a ladder to have to put together a cake at yeah. one point <laughs> yeah, for sure. so talk a little bit about like when you should decide to use like fake layers or you know how do you just decide all that when you're in that you know initial tasting designing phase absolutely so you want something that's going to fit the space as well so you don't want to do something that's kind of squatty or small if you've got a very grandiose you know area and you need to fill up that kind of vertical space. So you definitely want to, you know, talk about the size and the scale and everything. And some people, you know, like things that are very simple but grand, and that's definitely doable. You don't have to have something that's, you know, huge and gaudy. It can be very, you know, elegant and, and still be grand. But um, I think, you know, just talk to your designer about how many servings you really need and then what that's going to look like. A lot of times I'll, I'll advise my clients that even though we're doing faux cake, um, it still is pretty time consuming and there's, you know, you're still decorating it and it's actually sometimes a little bit harder to work with styrofoam uh, than it is actually cake. Interesting. uh, Because it doesn't really want to, um, give it all I guess I'll say I guess I'll say it that way but um but it's definitely doable and it actually you know makes the cake look quite grand for sure definitely doesn't taste as good no no (laughs) no definitely not even with that almond buttercream yeah make it better yeah for sure (laughs) and then from your standpoint don't get a crazy mother who's like don't forget to cut the right side don't forget to cut the right side true that's (laughs) true (laughs) don't cut into the styrofoam (laughs) yeah it's happened (laughs) I've done it. (laughs) 